everyone, this is Linda McHenry. I'm here to give you another tutorial about how to attend a video conference, this time with GoToWebinar. Do keep in mind that GoToWebinar is part of the GoToFamily, so there's also GoToMeeting and GoToTraining. And while they're very similar, the others do have some differences, but this tutorial should be able to get you to log into any one of those conferences or meetings. Before you actually attempt to get in, there are some things that you should know, especially if you are logging in from a workplace and you have security measures in place from, from your IT department. What I've seen most commonly um, from attendees who have a hard time getting in is they click the link in the invitation email and they see a circle that keeps revolving and nothing ever happens. That usually indicates that there's a firewall that's preventing them from access. Or it could also mean that the browser the default browser on their computer or device isn't compatible with the GoTo uh, platform. And GoTo webinar training and meeting work best with the Chrome browser. So if for some reason you click the link and it doesn't work, quite often if you copy and paste that link into a Chrome browser, it will work. Uh, Firefox seems to work pretty well as well. Uh, but again, if you have other browsers, that may be your problem. When you do get your invitation, usually the host of the meeting is going to give you links to go directly to the GoToWebinar website so that you can test your equipment and your system and your audio to make sure that all your um, hardware and software is compatible with their program. One of the things that you can also do is you can attend the video portion of the conference call or the video call with your computer or your laptop or your smartphone or your tablet and then you can actually connect to audio using your phone so that's some of the great things that you can do with the go to webinar platform and again you can go to support.goto.com forward slash webinar to get more detailed information one of the first things you want to do before you join your webinar is look at your invitation email. Usually when you get this email, you have to click on the link to register. You'll see that you get the phone number and the access code. If you are going to join the audio portion of the conference by phone, which you don't have to, but if you want to, it's there. And then the webinar ID is there. And this is important to keep in mind because if for some reason the link in the email doesn't work, you can visit the GoToWebinar website and in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a join link. And if you click the join link and you enter the webinar ID, you can get in that way. I'm going to close this email out. And once you've registered, you provided them with your name and your email and whatever else they want, you will then get another email that has the join link. All right, and this is the link. Now, if for some reason this doesn't work, you obviously need to get in touch with somebody um, in your IT department. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this join link and this is what it's going to look like if, the, if you've tested your equipment and your, your computer is compatible. Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an attendee in listen only mode. All right, so that was just an announcement from the platform that said that I am now attending the webinar. So what you just saw was the control panel collapse. This image here is the screen being broadcast by the host. So what I am going to do is I am going to X out of the, con the, um, the website, all right? Because I now have this software on my computer. I don't need that extra thing open. Now you notice that there's these buttons in the upper right-hand corner. That's what's left of the control panel. The control panel collapsed and clearly you don't know what to do and, and you, you don't know where your controls are if they disappear. If that happens to you, this orange box with the white arrow, if you click that, it pops the control panel out. And the very next thing you want to do is go to the very top and you'll see File, View, and Help. You want to click View. And then the third command down says Auto Hide the Control Panel. Make sure that's not checked. Now the control panel will stay expanded and you can see all the different options that you have. And the audio section of the control panel is open because that's most important. If you're connected to the audio via your computer and everything works well, 
You don't need to do anything else. But if you don't have any speakers or you're having issues with the audio, you'll probably want to connect using your phone. And all you have to do to do that is you click the radio button in front of phone and you're automatically provided with the phone number and the access code. They should have been in your email originally. Okay. But if they're not, you have them here. And then once you connect, you want to enter your audio pin. If you forget to enter your audio pin or you enter it and you don't put, enter the pound sign after it, you won't be connected to audio. So that's very, very important. I'm going to go put it back on computer audio because I want to show you how you see now we have that message again because I went from phone call to computer audio. So the system thinks I'm connecting, you know, I disconnected before now I'm connecting back. If you want to check your sound, you click this. All you have to do is press this button and you should hear sounds on your speakers. If you don't, then you know you have a problem. A lot of people don't attend using their microphone. If there's a large group, usually only the presenters speak, but you can test your microphone even if you're muted, which you can see up here in the upper right as an attendee, I'm muted. And that's what these buttons are for. This is the microphone button. Even when I click it now as an attendee, because the hosts have kept me muted, I'm not allowed to speak. This next button will allow you to turn um, the images that you see, the, the, the host screen to a full screen. So instead of just having that little block, you can have whatever images they're broadcasting take up your whole screen. If you don't like that, all you have to do is click it and it can come back. And this can be moved. I mean, you don't want to minimize it because then it'll disappear, but you can, if you want to move it in, Okay. You can, you can move it around. You can make it be tall or you can do whatever you want with that. Now this button here, this hand button, it's a hand with a green arrow and it's actually counterintuitive. When you raise your hand, you click the green button. Now, when you see the red arrow, you know, your hand is up because if you want to put it down, you press the red button to go down. So in a lot of meetings, you're asked to raise your hand. Um, and that's a, a way of taking attendance or a way to con for, for host to confirm that you're there and you're participating. This next question section is in GoToWebinar. If you want to send a message to anyone at the webinar, anyone hosting it, you can type your message. Now in other versions of this platform, for example, in GoToTraining, you can do a chat instead of questions. GoToMeeting has a different kind of chat. So for each one of the three, there's a different way to communicate. But chats and questions are how you talk back and forth with the hosts. One of the neat things about having the screen not be in full screen is this screenshot feature here. You see the little camera in the top. Sometimes when you attend a meeting, you won't get materials or, or if you get them, you don't get them till later. So if someone is presenting, let's say they're visiting a website or they're showing you material and it's, it's really important to you and you want to keep it, all you have to do, let me move this over and I'll show you, all right, I'm clicking the, the screenshot. It saves an image to your desktop. See, here's the image right here. All right. And as you can see, it's the same thing that, that you were looking at. So when you're attending a webinar, if you don't have handouts or if you're not going to get them later until later, and you want to see what it looks like. Um, and you want to have it for, for, for reference, you can, uh, you can do a screenshot. Now, of course, if you have a snippet function or some other print screen function that you want to use, that's fine. But I find the screenshot to be the easiest one of all to use. So that is pretty much all I have for you today. I thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, visit me at lindamchenry.com. I'll be happy to help you.